What makes a great role-playing game? Theme? A strong set of characters? A fun combat system? Maybe being able to explore an interesting world while setting upon the backdrop of a compelling story? Or is it the writing? Or how deep the magic system is? Most role-playing games only get a few of those elements correct. I've only played a handful of games that have excelled at all of them, and Final Fantasy IX is definitely one of them. My beloved Final Fantasy IX released for the original PlayStation in July of 2000, a mere three months and around three weeks before the PlayStation 2 would hit the market in October. Final Fantasy was the godfather of the JRPG dating back to 1987 with its original game. It's easy to forget how prolific Square used to be. So influential to this day, Final Fantasy games were often replicated with little to no shame by other role-playing games, especially coming out of Japan. The turn-based RPG was the game of choice for a long time, its popularity fractured only when the industry steered towards more action, MMO, and open-world style role-playing games. Final Fantasy today is a lot different than what it used to be. This iconic RPG franchise mostly held its roots in medieval fantasy and magic. It explored a futuristic, sci-fi approach with its first two entries on the PlayStation. Final Fantasy 7 and 8, where guns, giant robots, technology, and high-rise buildings replaced the castles and fantasy of the prior games. It was probably the start of the new age modern Final Fantasy. The iconic imagery of Final Fantasy, airships, crystals, magic, mages with pointy hats, and an impressive presentation are the cornerstone to any game in the franchise and welcome us back to Final Fantasy IX. It was only when Final Fantasy IX came out that the series would revive the classic, magic-based, light-hearted themes of the original games. It was a celebration. Final Fantasy IX took a step back to focus on what made the franchise, well, the franchise, to begin with. It stepped away from the emo storytelling of Final Fantasy VIII or appealing to the youthful pop culture of VII, instead dusting off and returning to its tried and true image of how Final Fantasy used to be. It's a game centralized around a profound and comfortable feeling of nostalgia. Popping in Final Fantasy IX into your PlayStation back in the day was such a special feeling. It wasn't just another Final Fantasy game for me, it was one of the best games ever. One of the most memorable things about FF9 for me is that it's everything that I used to love about the first games and ditches everything accessory from the contemporary games that didn't need to be. The junction system of 8 is out. Out with materia and characters being able to learn anything they want, and out with an overcomplicated story that often ends with more questions than answers. Final Fantasy IX has one of the most straightforward and rewarding stories, combat systems and ability systems of any game in the catalog, and that's what I love about it. It's back to the class system and predefined roles are not optional. There are eight main characters as well as a variety of secondary characters who pop in from time to time. Vivi is the black mage and the primary magic damage dealer. Dagger and Eco are white mages and healers or summoners. Steiner was the tank and sword specialist. Zidane is the quick and nimble thief, etc. Each character self-identifies with just one role, bringing unique abilities to the party such as Quinna's blue magic and ability to eat enemies. While many gamers prefer a more flexible class system in the lines of something like Final Fantasy VII, there are those of us who prefer having more structure. I appreciate both systems and I think the rigid class system of 9 works fine because it's still customizable thanks to the item AP system. It's not as complex as Materia or Junction, but it's still incredibly rewarding and intuitive. One of my favorite parts about Final Fantasy IX is that it starts off incredibly fun and interesting. The game opens up in the beautiful city of Alexandria. You play as Zidane and you're on track to kidnap Princess Garnet, who for reasons of her crazed mother, actually lets you do so. During the escape, you partake in a variety of conversations, you meet a lot of different people, you see some exposition, you partake in a minigame, and you stumble into Steiner and Vivi, who eventually join you for various reasons. It's just a really fun start to the game. Final Fantasy IX's story gets increasingly more interesting as you progress from city to city, learning more about the conflict, and like any good Final Fantasy game, ultimately having to save the world from the Queen, and of course, Kuja himself. One of the lost arcs to the best Final Fantasy games is a strong identification of writing and story development. Above any game in the franchise, I would say that Nine has one of the most coherent stories, laden with a strong theme of war, friendship, love, and most importantly, justice. Final Fantasy IX's theme is about banding together in the face of destruction, war, and conflict. Despite the motives of any one particular character, it all boils down to people coming together in opposition of something evil. But despite that fact, each character has strong internal struggles. Zidane's struggle to find out what duty and self mean to him. The personal struggle of Beatrix and Steiner towards finding out what it means to be loyal and who to protect. 
and of course Dagger's quest towards becoming the queen only to find out in the end what a queen is supposed to be versus what she thought it was ought to be. The beauty of Nine is that each character has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Most of them undergoing personal or emotional transformations that make them feel more than just pixels on the screen. But unlike something like Final Fantasy 7 or 8, none of them go widely misunderstood given Final Fantasy 9's much more straightforward presentation and story. The story beats put into place together provide the background for individual themes like finding out who you truly are as a person, what you believe in, or discovering what you want to protect in life. They come to the forefront with characters like Zidane, Dagger, and Steiner. And there is no mistaking Vivi. Vivi is one of the coolest characters in this game, let alone any game in the Final Fantasy franchise, and his personal struggles with the Eidolons provides several standout moments in the game. Soon he discovers his life has a timer on it, consistently giving him a reason to question his purpose in the world. It's a very sad moment. While Zidane is definitely the main character, it's the personal story of Eevee to find purpose that echoes throughout the story. It's felt with Zidane, Dagger, and even the villain of the game Kuja as he struggles with the idea to find his own purpose amidst the idea that he may not be perfect after all. It's the thoughtfulness to the characters in this way that makes the story so good and even the most unexpected playable characters like Quina or Iko are given proper screen time. It makes the supporting cast of modern games like Final Fantasy XV feel kind of underdeveloped and flaccid, as characters such as Ignis and Prompto seem to end up in the same emotional spot that they start in. But not Vivi or Freya for example, whose large transformations make the game feel grounded and personal. A small and lonely mage feeling like he doesn't have a home, growing into a character with purpose and friendship isn't unlike something some of us can go through in our lives too. These themes carry through to us. The world and sound creation is what make these experiences come to life. The pre-rendered backgrounds of Nine are so beautiful, both in execution and inconsistency to the main story. The entire world of Final Fantasy IX is light-hearted, incredibly inviting, and more colorful than any game in the franchise. This isn't the dark and dingy city of Midgar. Gaia is absolutely beautiful, especially when seen through the lens of one of the game's many full-motion cutscenes, which are by far the highlight of the game for me. Traditionally speaking, the FMB cutscene was your reward for completing a major section of the game. Arrive at a new location, battle your way past some random encounters until you reach the boss, defeat boss, read some dialogue, and sit back for a beautiful cutscene. These cutscenes transport you into a movie just for a little bit. They are where we see the character emotions beyond the text box, the overly pixelated character models, or the pre-rendered backgrounds. The FMV is fantastic, and it's so well done, especially when it comes to portraying how the characters actually feel. And the soundtrack, what can you say about it? It provides some of the best music in the franchise. Another great part about Nine is that it had some of the most amazing side quests and hidden things to do, some of which are so rare that it took the industry 13 years to find them all. My favorite side quest was the Chocobo Treasure Hunt. You can stumble upon spirits that give you access to Garnet's strongest summon should you take the time to finish the chain. You can partake in mini games, you can play blackjack by entering a secret code when the credits roll down, there's optional bosses, there's an auction house with an in-game economy, you can speed run the game to acquire Excalibur 2 by getting to Memoria in under 12 hours, you can get a Chocobo, you can fly in an airship, play Tetramaster, which is the in-game card game, and you can come back to NPCs later on for optional dialogue. There is so much to uncover in Final Fantasy IX, the beauty being that it's still wrapped in the most tightly woven package in the franchise. For me, Final Fantasy IX has it all. A wonderful story and characters, great world design, humor, concentrated gameplay, a great AP system for personalization, and a deep theme unique to IX. I'll always remember my first playthrough of IX and the shock to the experience. This wasn't a typical Final Fantasy game, it was a return to the classic FF design. Final Fantasy will always have its flaws, from being plucked out of the world and thrown into a random battle, which always seems to happen at the most inconvenient time, to the combat system ultimately becoming routine and a little bit too easy by game's end. Reading so much dialogue, it can be draining, and not everyone wants to play a game this long. But Final Fantasy is becoming something different, where action-based gameplay is now replacing the once turn-based combat system, and the games are being made so much different. Some of the experiences now are dictated by a quest journal, a quest marker, or a quest compass, and some of them have been converted to MMO material. But deep down, Final Fantasy IX was before all of that. It was a time when Final Fantasy was at its core a JRPG. A throwback and wonderfully nostalgic JRPG that reminded us how good Final Fantasy games could be, and is one of the best games ever. I'll always remember my time with Final Fantasy IX, because the games have become so much different today, I'll never get to go back in time to replay the game as it was back when I was 16 years old, but I can tell you one thing, I remember it just as fondly.